Hi folks, shop update. What's been going on? What have we learned? First things first, we learned that we had the wrong size mist collectors on our machines. The mist away unit worked great uh, on this relatively small VF2. Uh, that unit wasn't working so well on the VM3. So we purchased some of these Royal filter mists. This is the FX1200. Basically it's just the appropriate size mist collector. The way they are designed, they have a little bit less maintenance, a little bit longer term use life. They don't have filters. Downside is it's a little bit more expensive and a little bit harder to hook into your uh, machine. It's three phase and so forth and they work excellent and they pull enough vacuum in that machine so that when you open the door, you don't have any of that aerosized coolant or anything else come out toward you because that negative pressure pulls it all the other way. So a welcome to change. We put the big one on the uh, UMC as well, which really is a big machine. Uh, and on that note, I'll walk down to uh, where we move the other ones. The Robo Drill is quite a small enclosure and the SC20Y got the uh, old ones that we took off the UMC and the VM3. SC20Y has been running great. Uh, honestly, absolutely love it. Right now we're machining the, the Armad Vice washers. Um, it's a little bit of a tricky part because of that taper on the face. So it works actually really well because the lathe is effectively a fourth axis mill with a built-in automation solution in the form of a bar feeder. But on that note with the Mod Vice, we are excited to announce that we have the new version out and it's up on our website. It is much more soft jaw friendly. It's much more versatile. Here we are using the soft jaws. The traditional setup, I'll throw a picture in here, would have two rails that will allow you to clamp using the action of the screw here to create the clamping pressure. It is incredibly rigid. It gives you one of the most cost effective, flexible work holding systems out there. And for folks that are running import machines, hobby machines, we've now grown our line. This I believe is a tag plate that's coming off right here. Uh, those use the quarter inch mod vice system, which we've actually got over here on our Shape Oko. If there's a plate or a machine that you don't see on our website, please let us know so we can add it. The Johnny Five Project actually coming down home stretch. Seeing his face is just awesome. Absolutely awesome. We got a couple more um, unboxing and we're gonna start kind of merging the unboxings with the builds. We actually had to disassemble him a little bit uh, to work on assembling some of the lower frame parts, but really cool. I know it's taken a while, but well worth it. The other big thing is we started a newsletter called Chip Rag, and what we wanted was a way to interact with our customers and the folks that want to stay in touch with our channel. So every month in Chip Rag, we'll have some up-to-date stuff on what we've been up to, the videos, posts, uh, information, articles, etc. because I want it to be a useful tool for you guys. And so I thought, what do I want to hear about uh, in this world? I'd want to hear about what's happening in the manufacturing space, curated stuff. So. Uh, we launched the first one in February. I thought it went really well. The feedback we got was excellent. You can see the kind of snippets that were stuff we're going to include. You know, what are we hearing about what's happening in IMTS this year? What are some of their interesting tools and things that we've coming out with? Interesting videos, just a way for you guys to skim through something once a month and sort of say, oh, that's something uh, I'm glad I learned or glad I read. So uh, if you want to subscribe, you can either go to chiprag.com for a direct sign up or we've got it over on our uh, NYC site and on uh, Saunders Machine Works as well. Speaking of chip rag, in the March issue, we're going to share the files for this for the uh, either 3D printed or laser version for this tool tag system. We call it S Tools. Really been working out great. We'll do a proper video on it, but it's a way to tie in what tools in the machine, uh, how do we store tools that we leave set up offline or not in a machine. And then finally, when we want to keep the tools or inserts or boxes, we can keep them just like that. So I know tool 171, here's the wrench for it, here's never sees, here's an extra pack of inserts. We have an Excel file, which we'll also share that kind of lists the information you need to know about that tool. And uh, I'm guessing it's in this machine. If I look through it, boom, there it is. It's right now in this machine as tool 33. We're also thinking about a video, which I'm curious to see if you guys think it's useful. Let me know, called Practical Uses of a 3D Printer in a Machine Shop. But I will give you a little sneak peek at things we've actually found legitimately useful. Uh, we printed some dust cover type caps for our Speroni, which you do want to keep relatively dust free and free from any dings and scratches. So that's, I think, our 40, oh, that's the 30 taper for the Robo Drill. And this is the adapter for our 40 taper. Um, obviously the printing, the S-Tools racks, which I think we have one on the VF2. Ed, do we have a, a rack on the VF2 now? Uh, Pretty, can you show it to us? Yeah. 
So again, we'll share the files. So this is printed in sections and then you just glued together. Um, easier to print, frankly, than laser cut. Yeah, that's the way to go. Perfect. And the coolest one, I think, actually might be on the lathe. I'm curious if this is common on other dual spindle lathes, but on the Haas, the linear rails for the, the B axis for the sub spindle um, come right out to this area where parts either could be dropped or ejected by when they're done, or if you drop a chuck, God forbid. And so we just printed some, um, the last one is a little bit tighter, and then the rest of them just slide, and they're just little covers for these linear rails. And if you do happen to run the subsequent out, forget about it, they just get pushed off, no big deal. And the last update's probably on Proven Cut. We've added a bunch of uh, recipes, uh, and in fact, just uh, about a little over a month ago, Jeffrey started, who's been an absolute awesome addition. Uh, he's been focused full time on, you've been running both the Tormach and the Haas machines? Yeah, I think just this week I've ran like five or six different machines. <laughs> yeah. so. We were joking on the NYC CNC forums that this is kind of the job I want. Yesterday he was talking about using the Niagara stabilizers, pushing it as hard as he could on the Tormach, getting to a certain point, recognizing what the limitations were, and then moving over to the VF2 to see, okay, well, was it a spindle limitation? Was it a chip evacuation? How does it compare to a four flute? Um, that's what's really cool. Do you remember the recipe you got on the Tormach? Yes, um, I believe we were going a quarter inch depth of cut with a quarter inch end mill. We were running at 7,500 RPM and we were able to push that at 15 inches a minute and it sounded great. Slotting, full slot and full steel. Full slot, full yeah, slot yeah. and 4140. The machine was able to handle a little bit faster, but, but the noise really wasn't, wasn't sounding that great. Yeah. We backed it off to where it sounds good and all of that information is on Proven Cut. Cool, so yeah, the, uh, I don't know if this is the exact piece, but this was one of the samples. One of the keys of slotting is making sure you're able to account for both the XY motion of the machine, but then also how your coolant is, is helping or not helping with the chip evacuation. Speaking of Proven Cut, we have two partnerships that I'm super happy about and super excited about. First one is with Wazer. So we have a Wazer for the purpose of developing feeds and speeds to show what the machine is capable of. We're also gonna make some Johnny Five parts on it because it's gonna be really nice for that. Um, but a shout out to, uh, and a thank you to the team at Wazer. They had actually reached us out to us a while ago and uh, I didn't know if it made sense for us, but when, it re when I realized, wait a minute here, this is what people wanna know, how does it work? Uh, and with Proven Cut, we wanna take it beyond just what we have now, which is the milling machines. We'll be adding turning uh, and things like water jet. And similarly, this, this is awesome. It's a Daytron Neo high-end German 40,000 RPM machine. It just arrived yesterday. Uh, they come Monday to do the final install. Absolutely amazing. If you're not familiar with what these machines can do, uh, it's a super innovative control. It's a granite-based machine, very heavy, very rigid, very accurate. Really, really exciting. Actually, the long board was made by the folks at Daytron on one of their larger machines, which is worth uh, wrapping up this video showing that long board because it's just really cool and we're really uh, proud and honored to be working with them to help develop these libraries. Um, this is the long board and actually that's a great segue to these trucks. So we already did a video on these trucks, but um, Gavin Bath from the company Massive uh, is a New Zealand based guy who's spent some time on the generative design stuff and he designed a generative truck and we're really close to having the tool pass nailed down. It's actually a ton of work. Uh, that whole process, generative design, getting something that's ready to manufacture, and then getting the five axis tool path done has been a lot of work. Um, so here's a sneak peek of that. Uh, we will share it when we're done. We're gonna do a video on it. We'll share the process of making it, the file, all that stuff, uh, and we'll make our first generative part. So we were down in Charlotte last week filming at a few different companies, Onsrud and Stuart Haas Racing. And when we were walking through Stuart Haas Racing, the decal guys in the graphics shop for the NASCAR team, said, hey, any one chance that the machine shop here can make, uh, their machine shop can make an aluminum version of this decal tool? And uh, I chimed in and said, hey, would you mind if we took a stab at that? Nothing in it other than absolute fun and love of doing this. So uh, it, what's awesome is it gets window machined. So uh, this was a test one I wanted to make off camera. I've got the stuff dialed in. We're gonna make a video showing how we fixture it, how we designed it in CAD, how we cammed it up. And I'm actually about to hit record on making this version of it right here. As always, folks, take care. See you soon.